Hey guys, thanks for stopping by. My name is Patrick. Uh, today, I would like to discuss latency and the things you can do to avoid it and basically what it is and what your options are when dealing with it. So anyway, latency, as most of you probably know, is the delay uh, from your source, like your voice, microphone, into your computer, that's an input latency, and then back out of your audio interface, computer, to your ears, that's your output latency. So total round trip is your total latency. And so it can be extreme, like certain drivers, you know, be 20 milliseconds or more, which that's a noticeable delay, you know. But, um, ASIO drivers, which I would recommend, that's the best uh, driver for audio with the lowest latency times. Um, you can get them down to at this last computer that I built using a Thunderbolt uh, interface on a computer to a universal audio, uh, audio interface. I had it down to 1.7 milliseconds. And you know, milliseconds is a thousandth of a second. So that's pretty darn fast. But it's still, uh, in certain situations, that's too much. You know, there's, especially if you're recording vocals and someone's listening to their voice and they hear a, a delay of 1.7 1, 1 milliseconds, it's still too much. So I'm, I'll show you what, what that sounds like and then give you some ways around it. So uh, anyway, so I'm using Cubase here. I've got a drum beat on two tracks, same exact beat, just copied it. And those are perfectly in, fa in phase. And if I take one in Cubase, there's a track delay. Most DAWs have something like this. If I delay that second pair by 10 milliseconds, you hear that weird flanging effect there. That's, that's called comb filtering, and that's certain frequencies are getting boosted and certain ones are getting cut. And every uh, combination, like five milliseconds, going to have different frequencies that are cut and boosted. In general, the low end is going to disappear, um, but there's, without doing really heavy calculations, it's almost impossible to figure that out, um, unless you're a scientist. <laughs> um, but basically, it, sound, it doesn't sound good. So, and most of the musicians I know like themselves to sound good to, re you know, if they're recording something, you know, they need to hear, hear what they sound like for real, you know? So, you know, getting this latency down to even one millisecond still sounds bad. You know, that's one millisecond, even a half a millisecond. Got more low end there, but that doesn't mean that 0.2 milliseconds, now we lost the low end. So it's unpredictable for one, so you can't really fix it with EQ, and that's with no legacy. It sounds full and big, and that's how it should sound. So anyway. So my point being, any latency isn't good. You know, I can build the fastest computer possible and get it down to point something milliseconds. And I still will not want to record vocals or drums or something where they're monitoring through my DAW. So the things you can do to avoid that, one is have an external mixer so you're feeding your mics, mic or mics, into that mixer, and then using an output going to your DAW, 
and then a separate sin for them to listen to uh, on their headphones. Uh, so that way their, their voice isn't getting processed through the dock. So there's no delay there. Um, you may need to make sure you have uh, effects on board. Uh, some Most singers I know want a little bit of reverb in their um, headphones because uh, that's what they're used to hearing themselves, you know, on recordings and stuff. So you'll need, you need onboard effects or an external piece of hardware um, that you can give them some reverb, but you know, some minor stuff there. So that's one solution. The, the drag about that is you've got another piece of equipment you've got to set up. And, uh, you know, fortunately, once you get that set up, you can kind of leave it and focus on your DAW and the, making an actual recording. So um, the other option and the one I use most often is monitoring through your audio, audio interfaces software. Most audio interfaces out in this day and age have their own software mixing console. Um, I'll show you what mine looks like. I have the Universal Audio Apollo 8 and the console is their software interface. So I can basically, these are all my inputs, my analog inputs, and I got a bunch of other stuff in here. But basically you can take a send off that to separate signal. And this goes out to my, my headphone jack, headphone jack one, boom. So if, if I have, you know, a snare drum over here, I just, you know, how much do you want? You know, you adjust to here. So you do a, a rough mix for uh, <clears throat> everyone and send it to, uh, to them through that. And that's before it gets to your DAW. So you're still getting your signal into your DAW, but it's going right back, also going right back out your interface to using these mixer settings to their headphones. So that, that is the one I use most often. There's also a, oh, and one gotcha on that. You need to be careful about double monitoring. So if you're monitoring through that mixer, make sure that those channels that you're monitoring through that mixer are not also, also monitoring through your DAW. Um, in Cubase, I'll show you this little speaker is what determines if you're input monitoring, if it's lit and not, if it's not. Um, the other gotcha there is if you have in Cubase, there's a preference under VST auto monitoring. This basically, see I have it set to manual. That lets me control it with the position of the little speaker icon. Um, but any of these other ones will go into input uh, monitoring either when you're recording able to track while you're recording or tape machine style. It will be in uh, playback uh, when you're playing. And then once you stop, it switches back into input monitoring, which can be super bad, um, especially if you have a a uh, vocalist with headphones on and they're doing it in, in the room and uh, you stop it and suddenly now you're monitoring the speak, uh, the, their microphone through the main speaker. So uh, feedback, a lot of feedback. So anyway, make sure you're not monitoring through your DAW as well. Um, the third option, is a thing called direct monitoring, which uh, may or may not be available uh, to some of you. Um, it is not to me. When I'm using my Thunderbolt interface, um, you can look at your uh, little submenu, at least in Cubase, and you see this direct monitoring. And it's grayed out for me because uh, I don't have that availability there. Certain drivers, uh, specifically ones that have licensed that feature uh, from Steinberg will have that. Um, most of the Steinberg uh, 
hardware, if not all of it, will have direct monitoring. And the nice thing about direct monitoring is now you can do it all from your DAW. So you don't need an external mixer. You can get zero or near zero latency um, straight from here. So you just put those track, you enable direct monitoring, and it's basically sending that signal from the source right back to them. And you, and you can usually put uh, a limited variety of effects on that as well. So um, if you have that option, I'd explore that. Using the software mixer, um, once you get that all kind of sorted out and you've learned how to do presets and kind of automate your, your workflow, um, that's not bad. Um, the hardware option is also a good option and that's very tactile. You, you know, you know, what's what it's not, you know, routing a bunch of different things through the computer and dealing with all that. And you've got your one mixer and that's strictly for monitoring. And then you've got your computer and that's for recording. So if, you know, if that makes a difference to you, then, uh, you know, that's the way to go. So, um, and I will probably do another video on building computers if anyone's interested on building uh, super fast uh, computers that are uh, for audio and professional level audio recording or, or mastering. And uh, I don't want to get in the whole Mac versus PC versus Hackintosh discussion, but I will let you know why I went one way and I've gone back and forth over the years and why I'm doing what I'm doing right now. So if you're interested, leave me a comment below, let me know. And um, what else? Oh, subscribe to my channel. And if this video was useful to you, give me a thumbs up, please. And hopefully I'll talk to you later or you listen to me talk. <laughs> Bye.